Hey guys, it's Bub here. In this video, we're taking a look at Nano 11 V Next 26 H1, which was recommended to me by one of you guys in my previous comment sections. Nano 11 V Next 26 H1 is still in beta. The developers of Nano 11 have a wide series of different versions of Nano 11 that we can choose from, and we've actually taken a look at quite a few of them in the past. However, this one is running Windows 11 26 H1, which, as I learned from you guys in the comments section of my last video, is actually a legitimate build of Windows 11. I did not know that it was. So I'm very eager to see what the future of Nano 11 looks like as it runs on this latest build of Windows from Microsoft. And let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. So obviously, I mean, looks typical to what we would expect so far for a Windows installation, but we haven't gotten too far into it yet. And this is not good. Your device ran into a problem and needs to restart. We will restart for you. That is not a good way to start this video off. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. I hope it's not an issue with the ISO itself, but let's go ahead and try again and see if we can get into the installer. That appeared to work. I didn't change any VM settings. I didn't do anything. It just black screened on the first the first boot, which I say black screened. That's weird to say. I'm usually used to saying blue screen. Thank you, Microsoft, for changing that in your infinite wisdom. But let's just go ahead and go through. Again, we have that new installer that came with, I think, 24H2. Again, it's been so long, I can't remember. Uh, and we are using Windows 11 Pro. So we're already installing. That was a very quick and painless install process. Uh, as we would have expected. All right, and here we are in the out-of-box experience. One thing I really do like is when these ISOs give us the opportunity to go through the out-of-box experience. It makes it feel more personal, which I really do like. I usually don't like the ISOs that just launch us directly into the actual desktop. That just feels like, you know, what kind of other bloatware could have been included. However, you could have also included bloat with the out-of-box experience as well. But to me, it just seems more personal and more reputable based on having that out-of-box experience. So here, we're just asked to create a local account. So just name it local. No need to create a Microsoft account. That was skipped. Uh, apparently, we can't name it local, so we'll just name it Windows, uh, no password, and continue there. Yeah, it, luckily, it skipped over that Microsoft account setup, but makes sense for a Nano 11 or Tiny 11. Nano 11 really competes with Tiny 11, and the promises on its website seemed very good. Uh, it had a 3.4, 3.5 gig download size, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but I know it was in the threes. And then the actual install size says 7.46 gigabytes. So we're going we're gonna to definitely test that claim because a lot of Windows installs have gotten gigantic recently. So that's why we're going to take a look at this here. All right. So before I go ahead, jump in and install VMware tools, the first thing I do want to look at because of that tiny install size is validate that claim and it does look to be accurate. 7.86 gigabytes used on the drive. That's a 59.1 gig disk, so it's using way less than Windows 11 actually uses. The ISO size itself when mounted is 3.65 gigabytes, so pretty cool to say the least. I'm gonna go ahead and install VMware tools, and then we'll be back once we have a better viewing experience for you. All right, and here we are in the desktop with VMware tools installed. The one thing that immediately stands out to me that I like, and I'm not entirely sure if this is a Nano 11 wallpaper or a Windows 11 wallpaper. It's one I definitely haven't seen before, but I really like this wallpaper. Uh, even more so if you look into the details, it has 11 printed in various different fonts around this ribbon or this stripe here. I really do like the colors. I really do like this background. It really just feels premium. I would even like maybe if it didn't have the 11, um, but that's just my own personal taste. Again, that's up to you know your own taste if you would want those 11s along the actual ribbon. But other than that, I love this background. I know Windows isn't activated, so we can't really personalize it more. But at the same time, I mean, we, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, on the desktop by default, we have the, the recycle bin, and then we have a post setup, which has you know GitHub stuff in it, Copilot Edition Switcher, um, install software so if we wanted to install anything these are probably just all winget commands which is good because then it's not well it wouldn't be piracy if it wasn't winget but at the same time I don't know why I'm struggling there it is couldn't find that option right there yeah winget install I didn't know VMware Workstation Pro is in winget I need to learn a little bit more about that because it's a really cool tool but I just haven't had a chance to mess with it yet then we have OS tweaks, so you know, uninstall widgets, it's all scripts, and the good thing about those batch scripts is that you can open these and you can read what they do. So you don't have to just inherently trust that they're good, like Meringue OS that we took a look at last week. Rather, we can come in here 
this is a registry key, but we could edit it and see this is exactly what it's doing. So pretty cool that you can see what these are going to do. Useful stuff, of course, you have to self-promote, which you know, don't not exactly a fan of, but I get it. Then you have the OEM information for Nano Win, um, and then you have a registry key that will pause updates until 3000 because updates typically like to break custom OS's as this one. Let's go ahead and take a look here at this taskbar. So very minimal, uh, no widgets, uh, obviously a good thing taken out on a minimal operating system. Uh, moving on the right side though, we have the show desktop button, we have our notification pane and the calendar. Moving, we have our volume, You know, typically what we would see in Windows 11. Then we have our system tray with typical things by default, Bluetooth, remove hardware, Windows security, which let's see why we're warning, probably because we don't have a Microsoft account. Yep, it's warning us because we don't have a Microsoft account installed. All right. Uh, and then we have the VMware tools, which I installed. We then unfortunately have Outlook for Windows, but actually that was a download. So I accidentally made this ISO get more bloatware, but yeah, it does have Outlook for Windows pinned to the taskbar, but it's a download, uh, which I at this point cannot cancel. So. I guess we're getting Outlook for Windows now. Moving over, we have the Windows Store, or the Microsoft Store rather, which opens up, it's fully included. I think there was a mod that would let you remove it, I'm not sure. Then we have the File Explorer, where it shows us again what we were earlier, the Desktop Switcher. The one thing I don't like about Windows, and I don't know if there's a way that you can get rid of it on these, so I'm not criticizing the developer here, uh, is these logos or these images here. Um, I don't need my search bar to be integrated with the internet and show me ads and festive bread loaves for the holidays or holiday cookie recipes. I don't I don't need to see any of this. I just need my search to work. But speaking of that, we do have our search. Uh, nothing saved because we obviously haven't searched anything. We just have our suggested ones. Then in the start menu, we have nothing pinned, so clean start menu. And then under recommended, we have getting started and then a advertisement for WhatsApp. So unfortunately, those are still there. Moving down the list, we have accessibility, we have our calculator, we have feedback hub, file explorer, get help, get started, Microsoft store, notepad, paint, photos, quick assist, settings, snipping tool, Windows backup, Windows security, and Windows tools. So nothing too out of the ordinary here on this list, which is very cool because this is really all that's needed to run Windows. There's no additional bloatware on this system whatsoever. Let's go into the task manager and see what CPU utilization and RAM we're using. Again, remember that we are running VMware tools. So coming in here, we are using average Windows CPU utilization. So it's spiking up and down, although it's spiking higher than normal. Usually we see it idle around like zero to 8%. Uh, we're jumping to like, 14, 21, 54, 56. I mean, we can see what processes are running. Uh, memory, though, we're using 1.6 out of 2 gigs. So maybe I should have given this VM a little more than 2 gigs, uh, but because it is still Windows 11. But regardless, you know, we, we have extra RAM to go. But I am curious, what is using all of this RAM and memory? So memory, uh, the anti-malware service executable, uh, but the CPU, it's just system. I see it jump up, and it's task manager, desktop manager. Interesting to say the least. I don't know why those are using so much memory, but regardless they are. Let's take a look at one more thing And that is the Winver report to see what this says and it actually is customized to say Windows or Nano 11 V next Windows 26 H1 build 28,000 Point one can't forget the point one with that being said, this is just a high-level overview of Nano 11 VNX 26 H1. Let me know what you think about this OS down in the comments below. If you have any other ISOs you want me to take a look at, make sure to drop them down in the comments below because I love doing the viewer recommended videos. And if you like this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do technology videos and device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.